welcome back everyone. Toy Shiz here and a very happy early Halloween to you all. What better way to celebrate the spooky season than with some real Ghostbusters action. I cannot tell you how excited I am for this. All things up front. All things not of this world. We'll just say that. The price... I get it. These are going to be expensive. 202 bucks for the multi-pack you're going to see. 101 bucks for the individual Ghostbuster. It is what it is. That's it. I can see that a lot of people are going to go, I don't really care about the real Ghostbusters. Why am I even here? I'm just here to comment and talk about how awful the price is. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Not this time. Not this way. Because... As a collector, as a fan of the old toy line from Kenner, as a real Ghostbusters fanatic, this is the toy line for me, and I know a heck of a lot of you out there are saying the same thing. It's not ideal. Prices, eh, it's not ideal at all. It's not fun. It's especially not fun when you can't afford it. And I say this all the time. One day, if you work hard at it, you will. You will be able to afford things like this. It's not the end of the world. First and foremost, I want to say a huge Thank you, Eternal Knight, thank you to Fan Plastic 4. This guy made this happen. He posted these, and this is the best part. One year ago, October 31st, 2023, he posted these. He did the work. He did it just for fun. And Mondo goes, let's make those toys. So that goes to show you, you put in the work, you do rad stuff, it might work out for you, but what are the chances? You'll never know until you try. So get out there and do something. Get up off the couch. Go be somebody. Do something awesome. It doesn't have to be YouTube related. It doesn't have to be action figure toy related in any way, shape, or form. It should be what you want to do to have a great, awesome life, make money, and do rad stuff. And in this case, Fan Plastic 4, along with the entirety of the Mondo team, made this real Ghostbusters action figure line a reality. They've never done it. No one's done this. Kenner did the original toys. Mattel did Migos. Diamond Select did the little mini mates. Fine. That's fantastic. We've gotten merch upon merch upon merch for the real Ghostbusters. Never have we had the actual cartoon accurate action figures. So again, Mondo, Fan Plastic 4, everyone involved. You made this happen and I could not be more stoked. I'm with you, I ain't stoked on the price, but I am more so about, in my collecting days, what don't I have? The Real Ghostbusters has been a glaring omission. So quality over quantity. And for those of you out there that are gonna say, well, Mondo does this and man, quality, blah, blah. Every Mondo figure I've ever had, it's been fine. It really has. They are expensive. That's their price model. It's like any company, you don't like it, you just don't buy it. You move on. You enjoy it from other people's perspective. Let's have some fun with this. We get it. They're expensive and they're not for you. But what is for me is when Halloween was forever. And also, I want to say a quick shout out to J. Michael Straczynski. This guy was the writer for the real Ghostbusters. He is the epitome of the lore, everything that had to do with that show until they mucked with it <laughs> and did the weird Janine stuff. You got Dave Coulier. If you are a true, real Ghostbusters fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about and you're probably drooling as much as I am over these action figures. They look amazing. So first and foremost, starting tomorrow, October 29th at 10 a.m. Pacific, that's 12 noon Central, 1 p.m. East, you head over to the Mondo shop and you can order a Peter Venkman animated real Ghostbusters action figure. Just all buy his lonesomes if you want it. 101 bucks is the price quoted. You get Peter. You get an extra head portrait. You get his proton pack of which it is removable. That's amazing, right? Diamond Selects. Now I'm gonna say real quick, I love those real Ghostbuster figures by Diamond Select. I know that they were just kind of repurposed redos of the movie line, but that is the closest thing we have gotten to real Ghostbusters. And even though they are and they aren't on model, it's kind of a mixed bag. I love them. I will continue to love them because 
they are just so cool. And yeah, they're not great in posing and everything else, and that's why I hope that these Mondo six inch scale, they're one twelfth size, that they are much more easily able to pose out, have them hold the proton packs and the Neutrona ones and the traps and everything else because the Diamond Selects, that's where they kind of lack. They just sit on my shelf. They're nice. You also got the later San Diego Comic-Con exclusive box set where you had the Citizen Ghost evil versions of the real Ghostbusters. Those were set too. You had Slimer with the multiple face portraits, but he still had that body of the movie Ghostbusters Slimer and it just doesn't really fit because those are really too looks and it's just kind of like a mishigash right but at the same time it's cool i loved them still love them but i love what mondo is doing here so you have peter and he has the correct neutrona blast which is always in the cartoon was kind of a blue yellowish kind of hue and it was just awesome i loved it now some episodes they kind of went back and forth. Sometimes it would change. Sometimes you see a little pink, a little red, something in there. But for the most part, yeah, that would be the color of the Neutrona beam. And I like that it has the blip on the tip, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Again, real Ghostbuster fans know what I'm talking about. It was always like this kind of glowy orb from the tip of the Neutrona wand before it went, you know. And it was just kind of like that anime aspect where it kind of like sparked a little bit. And when they turned the switch, boom. Yeah, you'd be grabbing some ghosts. With Peter, you also get Slimer. Slimer, at this point, is the most on-model, real Ghostbusters Slimer that's ever been produced. When they did the Extreme Ghostbusters, when Treadmasters had that license, while it really wasn't on-model to anything you saw outside of maybe the Ecto, the Slimer for that specific toy line was pretty close. It was a completely different look. It's the same Slimer. It's just a different art style. I believe that was Dwayne Capizzi. But in either case, you got the tooth and the teeth up top and the eyes. And he's got the little floating stand. He looks great. I can't wait to get that Slimer. So if you want just Peter Venkman, who comes with the trap, and notice that there's a trap sucking in the Samhain, right? Or Samhain. Ah? So... Real quick on this, in kind of callback to J. Michael Straczynski, if you have the Firehouse box set, they had all those interviews and J. Michael was on there and he was talking about how it was Salwin, they called it Samhain, you can call it either which way, or you could just shut up, that was his little quote, right? But Samhain, as I attribute it to this character, that just sounds like a cool name for him. It's Sam Hain. Sam Hain. Makes him sound evil. Samhain, as in terms of the fall harvest, festival, October, all of that. Sure, you could call it that if you'd like. But he will always be Sam Hain. So I just want to let you know, for the people that are just ready, just ready to click those little key tabs right there and go, uh-uh, I know the difference. Yes, Samhain, Sam Hain, whatever you want to call him. But for me... He is Sam Hain on the real Ghostbusters. And even Egon and Sam Hain himself calls himself Sam Hain. So there you go. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. However, if you don't just want Peter, why? There is a dual pack with Sam Hain. Now, look closely at these facial expressions of which Fan Plastic 4 and the rest of the Mondo team have expertly crafted those specific face portraits. Sometimes he had eyes, sometimes he didn't. Sometimes he had more of a mouth, sometimes he had more of a happy, a lot of teeth, less teeth. Really didn't make any sense back in the 80s, right? Was off model, on model, didn't really matter. But officially going up against Slimer, we have Sam Hain himself in a dual pack with Peter Venkman. So you get everything that Peter Venkman came with along with Sam Hain, the figure, extra hands, and several swap out head portraits. Awesome. Fantastic. How much is this going to set you back now, you ask? 202 bucks. Drives it up another $100. No, it's not ideal. No, we've already gone over this. I know, it's expensive. But for the real Ghostbusters, for what I want, it's a no-brainer for me. Sam Hain with the ghost trap, with that effect piece, that shrinkage kind of effect, that's awesome. It's when he gets pulled in. He's going, no, it can't end this way, you know, and he, he, the voice is all distorted. It's awesome. And they've recreated that. That looks so flippin' cool. 
And in terms of Peter versus Samhain, yeah, they're going to be appropriately scaled. So Samhain clocks in at eight and a half inches, Peter Venkman, six and a half inches, and then of course Slimer at 3.5 inches tall, give or take, we'll say maybe two inches just for Slimer himself with the stand. So go figure on that. And I would say, yes, they are appropriately scaled for that six and a half inch scale that Mondo is now tackling. Now, keep in mind, like I said, with Samhain's head portrait, with the facial expressions, how it would change. I think that they've picked three great expressions to go with. It kind of encapsulates everything. But there are a few instances where Samhain gets big, he gets uh, extensively taller. <laughs> so again, he's like Megatron. Size really doesn't play a key in these old cartoons. It's uh, uh, or finding a middle ground. So as long as he's tall and lanky, long-armed, big old pumpkin head, and at least taller than the Ghostbusters, yes, you've hit the mark right there. So about 8.5 inches tall next to Peter Venkman, and then soon, the rest of the Ghostbusters. Because at New York Comic Con, at the Mondo panel, of which you can watch the entirety of the panel on my YouTube channel now, I'll put a link down in the description below and probably right here on the screen, yes, Ray Stance will be coming in a two pack and most likely as a standalone with Mr. Gash, the big guy with the mouth and the top hat and he eats other ghosts for sustenance. So I'm thoroughly looking forward to seeing that guy. And I'll be honest with you, Mr. Gash, out of all the big wigs of the real Ghostbusters universe in terms of the monsters and the ghosts and the ghouls and everything else, he's not high up on my list, but he looks like he would make for an amazing action figure just the overall look of that guy, that looks amazing. Winston, however, I'm more inclined to go, hmm, yeah, Winston with the Sandman. That's an excellent pairing right there. The Sandman was terrifying. His plan was terrifying. How would that even work? He's going to put the entirety of the world to sleep? Does that work in the sense of you get to wake up again or you just sleep till you die? That's the thing. They never really covered on that, but... That's just really what I always went with. I'm like, oh, man, he's a sinister guy. He's just going to kill everybody on Earth with his sleep dust. And not only that, so we have Egon. We got Ray. We got Winston. Egon was revealed at San Diego Comic-Con along with the Boogeyman. But we are going to be getting the fifth Ghostbuster, Janine Melnitz. Now, I did ask some questions. I know some deets, so we'll keep it simple for now. But it will be Janine in her civilian attire, the short mini skirts, and hopefully, hopefully, she has some very sharp, pointy green glasses. Like, I mean, when I open the package on Janine, I want to be able to slice through my own fingers. <laughs> you hear that, Q5? It's terrifying when I was a child. Anyways, I'm just happy to say that for now, it won't be the later seasons, Janine where she messed with a fairy godmother and I don't know, it was, it was the dumbest thing in the world. And then they didn't even reset her at the end of that episode. They just went back to being like, yeah, whatever. It's weird. Everyone's just going to accept the fact that Janine's changed all throughout the entirety of the later seasons, but yeah, <laughs> so dumb. Also, this Peter Vankman through and through is not, and I repeat, not going to be Dave Coulier. This is Peter Vankman himself. This is Lorenzo music. Boom. Can't wait. For these. You could probably hear it in my voice. And I know a lot of people out there are going to go, oh, you're just promoting, you're promoting Mondo to make these prices. Stop it. Listen to yourselves on this. This is not a big deal. This is supposed to be for fun. We're not getting on the tangent anymore. It's Halloween week. This could not be the better time to release these. They go up for pre-order again tomorrow, October 29th, 10 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Central, 1 p.m. East on the Mondo shop. I will put the links down below. They will be expensive. But if you're a real Ghostbusters fan, as no one has ever seemingly, we'll just say, wanted to do these in the correct animated style way, Mondo, Fan Plastic 4, you did it. So again, thank you for that. Before we go, just to say one other thing. There's a company out there that has had the Ghostbusters license for a while. And yes, they've had great success with online, with HasLab and everything else. But I don't think that they would make the real Ghostbusters how I am seeing them portrayed here by Mondo. There'd be realistic takes, weird folds, the ghosts would have missing paint, this or that. Think about it in that sense. You're paying for quality 
over quantity. And before you go and say, well, sight unseen, I don't know if there's gonna be QC issues. Anytime I've ever had a problem with Mondo, they fix it. And I know that they fix it. I've talked to other people who have ever had problems, they fix it. They do, they really do, they care. You got good people working there and they are really big fans of all the things that they work on and I know for a fact that they are all huge real Ghostbusters fans in talking with them. I brought up the most random things and they go, yeah, we know about that. We would love to make that. I'm waiting for that meat craw. Where's the meat craw, baby? This <laughs> That's what I wanna see. So if the real Ghostbusters lines continues, hopefully we get a giant meat craw that has ghosts flying all around it and uh, Peter's machine that he made that is stupid. Anyways, let's see what they do. Give them a chance if you're a real Ghostbusters fan. You've heard my thoughts and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything RGB. And I'm gonna leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember to anyone who has ever made real Ghostbuster toys, to anyone who's ever worked on the cartoon, the illustrations, Anybody in general, thank you. This has always been a big part of my childhood. I love the real Ghostbusters cartoon. For the most part, it still holds up. We'll say the first couple seasons, not the later seasons, but certain episodes, sure, like Flipside. I'm a huge real Ghostbusters fanatic. I cannot wait. When they're out, we'll have more to talk about. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.